honor to God, the head of my life, to my brother Reverend Marshall, Mr. Marshall, to my wife, Sister Barkley, thank God for you. Deacons, trustees, your wives, to all of you, God's children, here online now and later. Thank God for our ushers here. I'm, I'm, I'm standing in between. I call them the two fake LeVars. <laughs> Lavari, LeVar, and LeVaris. <laughs> But buddies, thank God for this wonderful choir and Sister Jesse. Amen. It's just a blessing to be home with my people. And I'm hearing y'all singing and giving your hearts and song, and it just blessing my heart. I want to. For a couple of weeks, give some encouragement to the church leading up to our 145th church anniversary. And if we could tag a theme to these sermons, be my letters to the church or from the pastor desk. I want to invite you to a familiar scripture in Matthew chapter number six today. While my focus will be on verse 33, I want to read verses 25 through 34 for context. Gospel of Matthew chapter number six. And as you turn to Matthew chapter six, I want to offer a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this privilege. To stand here and speak to us. Not because I deserve it, but because it's your calling and your grace and mercy and your power that makes it happen. Help me to help us. Speak to me, speak to us. And give us listening ears and receptive hearts to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse number 25. If you there, say amen. amen. And if you're not, Sister Mia has it up on the screen. It reads, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat in the body, than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Take note of the word much. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? If I could make myself taller, I would. Why take ye thought for raiment or clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles, or heathens, seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Tomorrow should take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Oh, we got enough to worry about today. Thank you for honoring the word of God. Whether you stand or sit. 
man. If I could tag a topic to this message. I'm going to deal with the topic kingdom math. Right. Or mathematics. Kingdom math. I was reading something interesting about the relationship of the sun to the planets. And while everything in its place is beautiful, it's a part of creation, there is nothing in our solar system that is more important than the sun. While the other planets help the earth to stay in its place, it's the sun's gravitational pull that keeps the earth and every other planet and moon in their place. It's the sun that keeps everything in its place. Everything revolves around the sun. And it's the sun that gives the life, the light, and the heat that is necessary for life here on earth. I want you to think about this simple question. If you were to replace the sun with any other planet or thing, what would happen? I'll tell you. Yes, sir. Reverend Marshall said it quick. Chaos. Everything would spin out of place. Everything would die. Because you cannot replace the sun with anything that's not the sun. What does that have to do with this text? I'm glad you asked. God's people would be wise to remember that the kingdom of God is central and primary and necessary for life for us. The kingdom of God. Outside the kingdom of God, there's nothing but death. That's right, that's right. But in the kingdom of God, there is eternal life. It is our very existence. The Bible declares, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Right, right. Paul declares that it is no longer I who lives. But Christ who lives in me. The Bible declares that you are the temple of God. You are no longer your own. You are bought with a price. The kingdom of God is our very existence. No agenda, no priority, no fault, or no opinion is more important than God's kingdom and God's agenda. Jesus even said if you put your hand to the plow in Luke 9 62 and look back you're not fit for the kingdom. Let me encourage the church in this brief little message through a little maintenance today. The first thing that I want to do leading up to church anniversary I want to change some spiritual ties. I want to do some spiritual wheel alignments. I, I want to change some of your spiritual oil. I want to give some spiritual tune-ups in the house through the text. We read in the text that Jesus gives us the example of creation and how God takes care of creation. He takes care of the birds. He takes care of the flowers. And I'm, I'm a bird watcher. I love birds. You heard me say it before. I've been watching birds since I was four years old with my mother. Looking out the window with the encyclopedia wide open, trying to, trying to identify every bird. I love birds, y'all. I really do. Especially the blue birds with the brown chest. They're so beautiful. 
It's just beautiful how God put the color in birds. I'm not even talking about tropical birds, just the ones that flying around Talladega, Alabama. You, you venture down to South America and you look into some of these tropical countries and you look at birds with colors that you've never seen before. They color so beautiful, they don't even put them in the crayon box. Can't nobody do that but God. And I, I like to, when I'm just trying to relax and ease my mind, look out my window and look at what kind of birds land and just start pecking in the yard. Jesus says, look at how your heavenly father feeds them. And maybe we don't think about it like that. Maybe we're thinking the birds are doing this on their own. They, they know where to look. But it's not the birds and not their intelligence. God does this for the birds. Land in some random place in your yard and start pecking. Because God has something already for it. If there are no berries, God has provided some grain. If there's no grain, God has provided a worm. If there's no worm, God has provided the insect. All the things that the bird can eat. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. God provides for the bird. The flowers, Jesus says. Just giving you context here. Look at how beautiful the flowers are. You, you may have a green thumb. I have a black thumb. I, I can't hardly get anything to grow. <laughs> you, you, you go and you look at my parents' yard. You look at Mother Addie's yard especially. Some of the most beautiful flowers you ever see. And you look at how they are shaped. You, you look at how they twist and turn. You look at how they reach up for the sun and they just open up. And, and the fact that God has given them food. He's given them sunlight. He's given the flowers a way to keep coming back every year. Every winter you see things die. But every spring you see life. God did that. And I want you to think about it. We're talking about birds. We're talking about flowers. None of which can speak words to you and I. But they still give God the glory. And God still takes care of them. And Jesus said, if I take care of a bird and I take care of the flower, I love you much more than them. I'm sure not going to take care of you. We might need realigning. Sometimes things begin to fall off in our life. Sometimes things begin to dry up in our life. Sometimes relationships begin to sour in our life. And we soon forget that if God take care of creation, that God is going to take care of you. So we come down to verse number 33. Verse 33 is a full inspection and tune up for the church. The first thing that I see in verse number 33 is that the kingdom of God is not on a linear list of other priorities. It's not on a one to five list where you put building on the same list with kingdom. It's not on the same list where you put earthly with the same thing as heavenly. The kingdom of God stands alone. It's not on a linear list. It's not on a list that you can put other things with it. It's all by itself. It's in a category by itself. It's not even apples and oranges because both of them are fruit. <laughs> Kingdom of God is unlike anything on earth. And Jesus tells us to seek it first. Our priorities have got to shift 
to a kingdom mindset. Uh -huh. And the pandemic, if not anything else on this earth, it taught us that we are the church with or without this building. We are the church with or without this property. We are the church with or without this table that we bless. We are the church without a program. We are the church whether we have anything earthly to call our own or not. When we couldn't come here and gather in this room, we could get on the phone and talk to each other. We can get on the internet and see each other. Then it graduated to the point where we can drive up in the parking lot and look at each other and hear each other and at least honk our horns for the Lord. We would be wise to remember that all these other things are not to be compared with the kingdom of God itself. The kingdom stands alone. If persecution would have come to America against the Christian church and they ran all of us out from our properties we go sit around the lake and talk about the Lord we go hide in a cave and talk about the Lord and we'll still be Union Springs Missionary Baptist Church he said seek ye first the kingdom of God my first priority, my first everything is the kingdom. But then that has to lead me to my second point. We've got to answer the question, what is the kingdom? If we're seeking the kingdom, first we need to know what we're seeking. The kingdom of God, simply put, is the rule of God. It's the rule of God. If, if you begin reading at Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 up to this point and you put everything Jesus taught in just these two chapters alone, you will fully understand the king, you will understand the kingdom, and you will understand the king's rule of command for all of his citizens. You will understand the entire gospel and the expectation of the disciples of Jesus Christ just by reading Matthew chapter 5 and chapter 6. This sermon on the mount. Jesus is showing us the behavior that he commands of us. A behavior that cannot be carried out without his Holy Spirit. Oh, I can't do these things without the Spirit. <laughs> You mean tell me you want me to be poor in spirit? You want me to mourn? You want me to be persecuted? You want me to be meek? You want me to forgive my enemy? You want me to love my neighbor? You want me to offer the other cheek? You want me to go the extra mile? I can't do any of these things except I have his spirit giving me the power to do what he told me to do. Jesus in his sermon on the mount lays out the rule of God. In, in, in giving us the rule of God, he's laying out the kingdom of God in this one sermon. So if we're seeking the kingdom of God, what does that look like? Every area of our lives that don't align with the king's rule must come under subjection to his rule. I got to get personal. I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, and folks think I'm perfect because I wear a title. And I'm not, my wife will tell you I'm not. She get to see the worst of me. Everything about Eugene LeVar Jacobs that does not line up with the rule of God, I've got to bring it under submission to him. I, I 
I've got to ask the Holy Spirit to let me see it, to convict me of it, to not let me have pride and deny that I need help. And I've got to humble myself and ask the Lord to fix this thing about me. That's what the church ought to be. That's what the church has got to do. Stop worrying about everything else and worry about how you line up with the word of God. So and so ain't acting right. Well, are you responding right? So and so caught up with this. Are you spiritual? Are you restoring them in a spirit of meekness? Where do you need to line up with the word of God? Every area of my life and your life that does not come under the it does come in alignment with the words of Jesus Christ, we've got to submit it to him. And that's what you call sanctification. It ain't no one and done. I'm saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, baptized. Sanctification is a process of submitting yourself to the Lord and let his word and his spirit clean you up. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Lord, I want to be right. Lord knows I want to be right. I'm a passionate person and, and I'm passionate with my preaching and that same energy that's in my preaching, I don't know how to contain it in other areas of my life. And I have to tell the Lord, Lord, take this passion and help me to deal with it. Help me to not be too angry. Help me to not say things that are not worthy of being called your child. Help me to line up my mouth with your word. And it's hard because if I can't let the passion come out through my words, it feels like I'm in prison. That's why I'm so wild when I preach. This, this is the only place I don't have to be so contained. But when I get angry, I'm just as wild. But it's not right. I don't curse. But I say things that's not edifying to the person that I'm talking to. Y'all don't know that person. <laughs> you you got to hang with me a little while longer for you to know that part of me. I can tell on myself. I know my cousin listening. He's squirming in his seat. He don't want me to say stuff like that, but I got to let you know. How can you know if I don't tell you I'm not perfect? I have an understanding that I've got to submit that area of my life to the Lord. <laughs> Y'all hear me talking about driving all the time? Oh, go when I'm on the road, folks, get on my nerve. But even though I'm in the car by myself, guess what? No, can't nobody hear me, but God hears me, and that behavior has got to submit to him. Because if I act like ain't nobody seeing me or hearing me in my car, then I'm becoming more and more undisciplined in my life. If I can bring that area of my life under submission to the Lord in privacy, then I'll do it a whole lot better in public. That's what Paul said. Bodily exercise, it does you some good, but it can't get you all the way. Paul said, I exercise godliness. You can't learn to do it in private. You won't perfect it in public. And you just putting on a mask. I don't want to put on a mask, y'all. I, I want to come under submission to the kingdom rule of God. I really, since Garcia, you said it this morning, I want to be about what I say about. I want to be real. I don't want people to be attracted to a fake version of Jesus. I want people to know the real Jesus. Even the one that gives me grace where I fail. The kingdom of God is the rule of God 
and we must seek to come under his rule first and foremost. I pray he is. I need this word. We need this word. Lastly, the kingdom of God puts everything else in place. Listen to what he said again, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you weren't prioritizing these earthly things and you were seeking the kingdom, the rule of God first, then you would know God taking care of all these things that everybody else like to worry about. All these things. Don't worry about adding new church members. That's in all these things. Don't worry about church members that don't act right. That's in all these things. <laughs> don't worry about finances. That's all these things. Don't worry about getting more volunteers. That's in all these things. Don't worry about relationships. That's in all these things. Don't worry about provision. That's in all these things. Don't worry about who is and who's not. That's in all these things. So people wonder why I don't get riled up about certain things. It's because I know. That's in all these things. If I seek God first, these words came out of Jesus' mouth, y'all. And I know we don't question the words of the apostles because we just said all scriptures God read right, but nobody else said this. Jesus said it. Seek first the kingdom of God everything else he's going to take care of I was thinking about this yesterday because we had a funeral in the family and it, it hit me that's in all these things too grief sometimes we worry so much about the grief Itself. I'm speaking to a lot of us because we've been hit. The grief. We worry about it. We can't let it go. I, I was washing my hands in the study yesterday and this hit me. We, we struggle with wanting to not let it go. But even in this, Jesus says, I'm going to take care of that too. If you seek me first, you wondering how long you gonna cry? Seek him. He'll wipe away your tears. We worry about too many things that we can't control. Even the things that we think we can control are still in God's control. Who's going to be the next president? I don't care. <laughs> That's in God's hands. And the Bible tells us to pray for all of those who are in authority. I hope y'all evangelical Christians that's so good and high and mighty hear me. The Bible said no matter who's in charge, you pray for them. Because the one who's really in charge, he can fix it for you. Stop worrying about it. 
all these things. I close with this statement. If you know the price of the kingdom, if you know what was paid to bring the kingdom of God to earth, then you'll also know that the king is going to make sure all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. He paid for this kingdom with his own blood, daddy. If he paid for it with his own blood, he didn't pay for it just to leave it off to the side and ignore it. He bought it with his own blood. He's going to take care of it. That's how math works in the kingdom of God. One plus one don't work to the same way in the kingdom that it does in the earth. You see Kim and he adds all these things. Doors of the church open. Maybe someone that doesn't know the Lord as your personal savior. That's not an insult. It's just where you are right now. But you want to surrender to Jesus. You want to come under his rule. Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus is the Lord, believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If that be you, we want to pray with you. We want to usher you into the kingdom. Maybe here in the Holy Spirit, prick your heart to join with this ministry. We want you saved first, but we would love to have you here. I know we have communion, but I still want to pray. You may need prayer. We're going to get ready for communion, but I want to give you the opportunity just to make your prayer request known. And we're going to pray. And we'll go into communion. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you for your wisdom. God, help us to see us. Help us to see where we don't line up with your rule. Help us to humble ourselves and submit, Lord God. That, Lord, we may find grace. Lord, you don't turn us away because we're flawed. But you invite us to acknowledge that, to confess, to repent, to come to you, Lord. Your words as we're able to go into the holiest of holies, into your very presence, God, and receive mercy. Help us where we fail. Correct us, Lord God, where we need alignment in the mighty name of Jesus. But I thank you for this anniversary that's coming up on us. That, Father, you have strengthened this house for 145 years. And I don't believe you're done with us yet. Father, I pray your blessing upon every ear that hears my voice. Lord, you know what they need. You know the very issues of their lives. You know the people that they're praying for. And God, I believe that you're able to solve every problem, even as I speak right now. Father, I pray that you will visit each and every situation. That you help them in their situation, Lord. Father, especially those who have been grieving. It's laid on my spirit for a reason, God. You know that that spirit is heavy in this place. Lord, I pray for deliverance right now, God. Some don't want to move on because they feel that moving on is disrespectful to the memory of their loved one. But Lord, let them know. 
you got that taken care of God Lord if they went to sleep in you they're celebrating with you now to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord help your loved one to live Lord God not be weighed down by grief help them to see that it's okay to move forward because God they're moving with you and everything else you taking care of God Father, now as we get ready to partake in this communion meal, we pray that you would bless the elements, that they might bring nourishment and not harm to our bodies. I pray, God, that you would give us a mind to reflect, to examine ourselves like your word says. If there be anyone that we need to forgive in our hearts, let us release it now, Lord God, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In the hands of our deacons.